Uh, hey, Kaminga, won't call you Jonathan because you don't look like that. How do your knees feel? It felt great. Uh, been out for a little bit. I was more concerned on how am I getting better uh, to come back today. And obviously, it felt great as well as more sure of my knees just being ready. And I felt like today was the day. All right, that's enough of that, not Jonathan. Let's get to the question <laughs> that everybody really wants an answer to. Hey, Jonathan. You all right coming off the bench? I wasn't concerned about coming off the bench. Coach always say, you know, it don't matter. As long as you go in there, you give all you got, they're going to keep you in there. So I was just more concerned on just going there and just impacting, win. Because a win is a win at the end of the day. And just play my game and just, that's pretty much it. And then the media did what the media does. They looked right into JK's eyes and they said, hey, Kaminga. I know you just said that you weren't concerned about coming off the bench. But are you concerned with coming off the bench? Don't affect me at the end of the day. Uh, as long as I know I go out there and just affect us winning. That's all that matters, you know. Everybody could play. And at the end of the day, it's coaches' decisions. If that's how I feel, like everything is moving well, you know, why would you want to go away from while moving well? And me personally, I think since I've been out, everything's been moving just fine and it's not because i'm out that's why we're moving fine but at this point everything is moving well you know we're just gonna stick with what gonna help us win and just keep winning games you know it's not a big deal but i blame clay for this it's not like a big deal it's not a big not mad but i blame clay for this what why, why have we reached this spot with warrior basketball this year where coming off the bench is some sort of criticism it's some sort of dark dunce cap that you gotta wear oh god I gotta come off the bench. It, it, yeah. Go around the league. You know how many awesome players come off of the bench? And by the way, the Warriors have a situation where look, how many players do the Warriors have who've appeared in an all star game? Uh one, five? two, three, four, five. Five. Right? five. Yep. Five. Five. Okay. The whole year started this way. Hey, Chris Paul. <laughs> you okay coming off the bench? He had never come off the bench before. You wee little non-warrior. You can't come in here and start. And it became a whole thing. You coaching? And Chris didn't necessarily love it. And I didn't love Chris's response to it because it also seemed obvious to me. But it's like, I've said this now a bunch of times. I've warmed to, to what Chris has done this year with the Golden State Warriors. And yes, it's off the bench. And Klay Thompson has spent some time off the bench. And Andrew Wiggins has spent some time off the bench. And yeah. now Kaminga's going to do it because Trace Jackson Davis has found a little thing here. There's a dynamic that he brings to the Warriors that they have not had and they need, and it's good. And and so I, I, I just I wish there was a way for us to sort of attack this without making it a thing. I just don't think it's that much of a thing. Get your get your twenty five to thirty minutes. Yep, and they come when they come. It's not a thing, but we make it a thing because we all attach a certain amount of import to starting. When anybody in the league will tell you, the more important thing is who finishes. It's not who starts the opening five. And think about it: most of the time in an NBA game, the final five minutes are much more important than the opening five minutes. The only time the final five aren't as important is if the game's already out of hand. If you're down by 25 with five minutes to go, well, then those five minutes probably aren't that important. And also, that would mean that the first five minutes, you, you probably didn't do great if you ended up losing the game by 25. There's only one player on the Warriors this year who has started every single game in which they've appeared, and that's the chef. Yeah. Every other player has come off the bench at least a few times, including Draymond, who's played 53, and he started 50, and Clay Thompson came off the bench 14 times. Andrew's done it 12 times. So if anybody's going to feel slighted coming off the bench, well, then you probably don't fit with this Warrior team because everybody other than Steph has spent time coming off the bench in this season for the team. Kaminga played more minutes than two of the starters did yesterday. He went 9 of 11 from the field. He had a double-double, 21 points, 10 rebounds. He also threw four assists in there. 
He even he knocked down a three-pointer. He hit both of his free throws. It's a phenomenal basketball game, especially coming off of a six-game absence. Absolutely phenomenal basketball game. Um, who cares? Right. Who cares? But the, the reason I said I blame Clay for it is Clay made a thing about it earlier this year. Tim Kawakami tried to ask him a question. You going to bench me? You going to bench me? You going to bench Wiggs? Yeah, we're going to bench somebody. We benched Chris Paul. <laughs> and there's seven of you or whatever that people want to start or think should. So, I don't know, man. I just, I, I don't. It's the idea of benching somebody. Just because you come off the bench doesn't mean you're getting benched. For me, it, it's kind of a misnomer because you could not start. Like you just mentioned, Kaminga didn't start, and he played 27 minutes. He played more than TJD, more than Draymond, and almost as much as Clay Thompson. Does that mean he got benched because he wasn't out there when the ball got thrown up in the opening tip? No, it just means that five other guys started the game and you still came in and played 27 minutes. That, to me, is not getting benched. Yeah, no, getting benched means you're out. Right. It's like a starting quarterback, right? Desmond Ritter last year for the Falcons got benched. Ooh, boy. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to come back. They may go back to you in a few weeks, but he got benched. Right. Um, so, yeah, I don't, I don't look at it this way at all. And I was thrilled to see the way Kaminga answered these questions. I'll, I'll say this about Jonathan Kaminga, and we had a bunch of conversations about this last week because uh, FP is it's borderline man crush uh, with regard to yeah, uh, I was Jonathan listening Kaminga, to it. Yeah, which is fine. I get it. But uh, Jonathan Kaminga, since the Shams tweet, and I wonder if you guys could look that up. What was the date of that? I, I feel like January, right? Is it January? The uh, I've lost faith in Steve Kerr. Yes, that one. Yeah, it was January. January. I'll find the exact date. Dude, Jonathan Kaminga, since that tweet, has just been fantastic. And I don't just mean his stats. Jonathan Kaminga, since that tweet, and we've already talked to Steve about it, clearly there was a meeting of the minds that happened after that. Yep. We tried to get on the same page. Kaminga has played in most of the games, started most of the games since, but now he's going to come off the bench and probably will continue to. But he has said all the right things. He's done the right things on the court. He's performed on. He's stayed quiet off. Ten rebounds last night in 27 minutes to me is about as good of a thing as you could see from the guy who in the series against Sacramento in the playoffs last year would not go get a rebound. And now he's got ten. And um, and a double double, quote, off the bench. Right, I, I, he's been tremendous, and um, the Warriors should be very very excited with where he's at. That was January fifth. The uh, the tweet from Shams, which was in advance of a game they played that night against Detroit, and he played thirty five and a half minutes. Remember, and it felt like it was a response to the tweet. Whether or not it was, only Steve Kerr can answer. But. In the three months since that tweet from Shams came out about uh, Warriors forward Jonathan Kaminga has lost faith in Steve Kerr and no longer believes that Kerr will allow him to reach his full potential. Since then, 30 minutes a night, 19.4 a game, 5.5 rebounds in 38 games. And a public statement that he would like to be a Warrior for the rest of his life. Exactly. That happened uh, about halfway through that three-month span. And... Coming off the bench and saying, "Why would it?" It's not not just I'm good with. It's like, why would we? Why on earth would I not be okay coming off the bench? The team's playing great basketball. You don't want to disrupt that. Plus, I just came off the bench and had 21 and 10. And by the way, had this to say about rebounding. I don't know if you remember uh, when the season started. Uh, I think the concern was how's JK gonna rebound, and I feel like every other day I get a chance to step on the floor. It's just getting better at rebounding. Because uh, it's, it's a big for us. Uh, everybody got a rebound. Fantastic. Um, my fandom for this player has grown markedly in the last three months. My thought on where this is going, who he can be, his importance to the organization, um, is, is at an absolute high right now. Um, no, he's not untouchable because no one can be with the situation that the Warriors are in. But I don't think we could have sat here on New Year's Day 
and predicted that it would look like this for uh, for Kaminga over the remainder of the regular season. And it's, it's, yeah. it's so good. It's so good, and it's gotten to be consistent to where now you, you look at a game like last night where it's a double-double, and he's got 21-10, and 10 and you, you're not surprised by it anymore. Not that you expect that. It's nice to think that he can do that consistently, and he has. And if you look at his game log ever since that, the tweet that Sham sent, he's only been in single digits twice in those 38 games in points. He's been between 11 and 27 points, 28, I think, 29 I'm seeing. He's got a consistency now that is maybe the most impressive part for me, the fact that he doesn't even flash anymore. This is what we've grown to expect, and he delivers. Do you guys remember what precipitated the report from Shams? It was the day before that game. It was the loss to Denver at home when they had an 18-point lead in the fourth, and and Kaminga did not play a second in the fourth fourth quarter. And it it evaporated. Was that the game that Jokic hit the buzzer beater? Yes, from like almost half court. Yeah. If the buzzer beater doesn't go in, do we get that tweet? Probably. Yeah. You think? I think so. Because don't the Warriors win? Yes, but Kaminga still didn't play at all in the fourth quarter. Yeah, tough. didn't play the final. I think eighteen yeah, minutes of that exactly. game. Tough, tough to go to Shams after a win. That's not a good look. I bet his agents would say, "Let's wait. Let's wait for another day." Tough to go to Twitter with after a win, especially against Denver. Right. You beat the champs, and you had to Twitter and complain. I think that I, I boy, I think the fan base reacts differently. Even though he still he would have had a point. Yeah, he absolutely would have had a point. But timing is everything. So I blame Jokic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Forget the fact that they, <laughs> you know, that they blew they blew a huge lead. And let's just look past the the part about them giving up a buck thirty uh, at home. Jeez. By the way, which is uh, which is what you do when you're the Golden State Warriors in it, 2024. It sure is. I mean, it's tough. It's tough looking at this team, and and I do wonder sometimes: is this real or is it just perception? Because I think the perception of every fan base, any sport, if you're a big part of a fan base, if you're a diehard, you think your team has made all the bad trades and all the bad draft picks and has blown all the leads. Your closer is the one who's given up all of the two-run leads. But that doesn't happen to anybody else. And so when I look at this Warrior team, because it's something that's come up a lot this year, you know, Dan, (laughs) if they had just won four of those ten games that they blew, right? look where they'd be right now. Is that actually the Warriors, or does every single team feel that way? Every single team feels that way, but this year's Warrior team, I think that that sort of of a thought pattern is, is more appropriate than ever before. Not that they would have won all the games that they blew, and, and the number's closer to 10 games, I think, that they've blown, yeah. 7 to 10. If they just would have won half of them, and I heard Guru earlier today, they'd be a 4 or 5 seed. Yeah. And yeah. he's not wrong. And again, what the hell's a 4 or 5 seed? It means you're probably facing a very good Western Conference team, and you don't have to worry about the play-in. Right. But- you're not. You're not usually winning the championship out of the four of the five seed. No, you're not a front runner or a favorite to win the West, especially this year in the West. Yep. That Denver game, Mark, just looking back, they had 107 points through three quarters. Dude. And lost. They were up 107-94 after three Ugh. and lost. What was their biggest lead? The biggest lead of the whole game. Oh, boy. I'll, Did they I'll, get up by 20? I don't think so. I think they got up by... 17, 18? I think they had an 18-point lead with like 6.45 to go. God something Lord. like that. 123, 105 with, yeah, 6.50 to go. Good call, Chip. Wow. Look at me. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> Try to keep it alive for yeah. at least one show before I forget. <laughs> Someone on YouTube said we should get a new segment called Chip and Dibs. Okay. Yeah. Maybe Friday. That's uh, Maybe yeah. Friday. Okay. Yeah. I'll be listening out on Highway 5. Attaboy. Actually, no, I won't. I already be there by the time you guys start. Getting up early. Oh, getting after it. So early. Attaboy. That whole, you know, the strategy of Highway 5 is a thing. My parents did it today. The whole idea is don't hit rush hour in either big city. Exactly. And so if you're going to... Although you're going counter if you're leaving here in the morning. Yeah, morning is no problem. Commute. But if you but you don't, because you know, L.A. rush hour starts... About noon. I don't know, every minute <laughs> of every day. 
But yeah, I don't want to go through LA in the afternoon. So either uh, either get up at five o'clock and go, or or wait till noon. Wait till just wait till noon. Yeah, get out there now. Make your way down. Stop for dinner on the grapevine, and then get through in LA at about eight thirty when traffic is still bad. Right. 